Research Festival, guests, fellow presenters and researchers, a good day to all. Today, I will be presenting to you my research study entitled, Self-Learning Module Dimensions and Study Habits as Predictors of Academic Performance of Students in Mathematics. Authored by yours truly, Marla B. Abinoha, Master of Arts in Education, Major in Mathematics, with my advisor, Dr. Melanie Idig, a doctor in philosophy in mathematics. Despite the great effort in the field of education, the academic performance of students in mathematics is still not promising, as cited by the National Research Council of 2002. In the global problem situation, students' achievement in core subjects including mathematics is declining. These were evident in a country such as Indonesia, Nigeria, and Kenya. In Indonesia, the Program for International Student Assessment Report of 2012 revealed that Indonesian students' mathematics achievement scores are extremely poor, with the country ranking 64 out of 65 countries, as cited by Atisokmo and Saputri of 2017. In Nigeria, it has been recorded that students' academic performance in mathematics is below expectations. According to the findings of the West African Examination Council from 2009 to 2014, secondary school students' achievement in core subjects, including mathematics, is declining. In Kenya, poor attitudes was identified as one of the contributory factors to low achievement of students in mathematics in most secondary schools, as cited by Bobwa et al. of 2012. In the national scenario, the low achievement in mathematics is also a problem in the Philippines. This was demonstrated by the latest trends in international mathematics and science study 2019 results, which indicated that grade 4 students from the Philippines received the lowest scores out of 58 countries, as cited by Morales of 2020. In the local scenario, from 2009 to 2015, the average regional national achievement test score in mathematics for DepEd Region Office 11 was 47.8%, well below the 75% passing percentage rating, as cited in Philstar 2019. And academic performance in mathematics of junior high school students fluctuated between 84 and 79 from 2015 to 2019 in one of Dabodal Norte's campuses, ranging from 84 to 79, as cited by Ramiz 2020. There have been researches that have looked into the relationship between teaching methods and student study patterns and academic success. This paper proposed to fill a knowledge gap surrounding self-learning modules based on these phenomenon dimensions and study habits as predictors of academic performance of students. This study aimed to be part of the solution by providing relevant information on the use of self-learning modules that would help the government to develop and improve an effective educational reform to benefit the learners during the pandemic crisis. For the theoretical framework of the study, this study is based on Rogers' constructivism theory, 
Constructivism, as cited by Masnod 2005, underscored the active role of learners in understanding and making sense of information. Self-learning modules have been shown to be effective in improving student understanding and facilitating learning, as mentioned by Khalil, Nelson, and Kibal of 2010. In addition, this study is supported by the theory of Amara and Sieda of 2017 that academic achievement is significantly positively correlated with study habits and all of its subscales. It is suggested that effective study habits could lead to good academic performance. The research questions are the following. What is the level of SLM dimensions in terms of content, the language, presentation, and assessment? What is the level of study habits of students in terms of time management, concentration, note-taking, and reading skills? What is the academic performance of students in mathematics? Is there a significant relationship between SLM dimensions and academic performance of students in mathematics? Is there a significant relationship between study habits and academic performance of students in mathematics? Do SLM dimensions and study habits significantly predict the academic performance of the students in mathematics? For the method, this study utilized descriptive correlational design. Descriptive correlational studies describe the variables and the relationship that occur naturally between and among them. Salsa et al. of 2007. The research respondents. There were 337 grade 10 students selected through stratified random sampling from four public secondary schools of New Korea District in the division of Davao del Norte. The following were the instruments used. A modified survey instrument to measure the level of SLM dimensions, an adapted instrument to measure the level of study habits, and a modified test instrument to measure the academic performance of students in mathematics. The protocol of this research study had under then a research ethics review. Permission letters were secured from the proper authorities prior to the conduct of the study. The researcher then conducted a virtual orientation about the study with identified respondents through the help of the gatekeepers that were employed in each school. Signed informed assent and parental informed consent forms were secured from the respondents before the conduct of data gathering since the participants of the study were minors. The respondents individually sent their electronic signatures by a private message to the researcher via messenger. The researcher administered questionnaires through the online by sending the form link to the respondents. When all respondents were done answering the researcher, done, the researcher downloaded the data of responses from the Google form platform. After the administration of the two questionnaires, the researcher administered a summative assessment test. This was conducted online via Google Meet, where the respondents were while answering the test. The allotted time in answering the test was 60 minutes. Answer sheets were taken picture by respondents and were sent to the researcher via messenger. After the administration of the survey questionnaires and assessment tests, the data was carefully collated and accurately tallied. Then, the data was submitted to the official statistician for the analysis and interpretation. For the analysis of data, the following statistical tools were used. Mean, person R, and 
the regression analysis. For the results and discussions, Table 1 presents the level of self-learning mutual dimensions. The level of self-learning dimensions was high and met the learner's needs in almost all occasions. The data were homogeneous. Table 2 presents the level of study habits of students. The level of study habits of students was high and manifested in most occasions. The data were homogeneous. Table 3 presents the students' academic performance in mathematics. The academic performance of students in mathematics was satisfactory and met the expectations in some occasions. Table 4 presents the significance of the relationship between self-learning mutual dimensions and academic performance of students in mathematics. The non-hypothesis was rejected. Therefore, there was a significant relationship between SLM dimensions and academic performance of students in mathematics. Table 5 presents the significance of the relationship between study habits and academic performance of students in mathematics. The non-hypothesis was not rejected. Therefore, no significant relationship between study habits and academic performance of students in mathematics. Table 6 presents the re regression analysis of the self-learning module dimensions and study habits as predictors of academic performance of students in mathematics. Only self-learning module dimensions is a predictor of academic performance. Conclusions of this study are the following. Self-learning module dimensions met learners' needs in almost all occasions. The study habits of students was manifested in most occasions. The academic performance of students in mathematics met the expectations in some occasions. There was a significant relationship between SLM dimensions and academic performance of students in mathematics. There was no significant relationship between study habits and academic performance of students in mathematics. And SLM dimensions significantly predicts academic performance of students in mathematics, while study habits does not significantly predict academic performance of students in mathematics. For the recommendations of this study, for the students, they will make adjustments based on their learning acquisition. For the teachers, they may employ suitable interventions for the learners. For the school heads and administrators, they will create the school-based interventions and programs. For the deaf officials, they may assess the implementation of SLM. And for other researchers, they may, they may have conducted similar studies having senior high school students as respondents. They may consider the effects of other factors that affect academic performance. And they may broaden the scope of the study. And for the references, these were some of the references cited in this study. Thank you and may God bless us all.